This is Gaby. Gaby is a Morky. So he's a mixed breed. Almost looks like a beaver terrier, doesn't he? Slightly. But he is a Morky, and today we're gonna be doing a beautiful pet trim on this guy. He is so fun to work with. He's only about a year old. He's perfect. I have enjoyed working with him since the first groom that we did together. This dog is just made for grooming. He loves it. What a perfect dog to share with you. This face, he's the perfect dog to film. You're gonna love this. So I start off every dog by pre-brushing, just trying to remove any dead hair so that we have a perfect coat to work with when it comes time for trimming and clipper work. We are doing minimal clipper work on this guy today. It's gonna be a lot of scissor work. We want the shape and it's a good one. We're gonna brush him out thoroughly, especially the areas that are longer guys, like the ears, their fuller ears, fuller tail. Those are areas that you wanna make sure are really, really brushed out nicely before you bathe them. We'll see you guys in the tub. So we're ready for the bathing process and there's a lot of Neat things that I have to tell you about bathing. For one is safe tub restraints. Most pet leashes go around the neck like this. And a lot of dogs, they tug and pull when they're in the tub. They don't really wanna get a bath. Okay, I get it. I've designed this safe tub leash that goes on like a harness, like this. They are handmade by our friend Raquel Grant. They are linked in the video description below for you to order personally from Raquel. It creates a harness completely avoiding his trachea area, very important. He's safely restrained in the tub. This is made out of a mildew proof, waterproof. This is bungee paracord. It gives slightly it will not mildew or mold, and you know, that's important. We're gonna hand wash little Gaby today. I'm gonna be using this really, really nice shampoo. This is made by Petals and Tails. They have many different scents. This is the Lavender Fields Forever. I love them all. But what I love about their products is they clean beautifully, but they're pH balanced, all natural, and they contain CBD oil and hemp oil in the shampoo, which is a anti-inflammatory or a healing. If your dog has any allergies or any skin abrasions that are caused by being itchy or redness or rashes, this is going to help stimulate the skin, the blood flow, and the healing process. This is a wonderful shampoo, but aside from being so wonderful and having all these amazing ingredients in it, the clean and the lather ability in this, you use very little. I'm gonna show you right now how I bathe this little guy. We're gonna use a loofah to help distribute the wonderful properties of this shampoo and to get the most out of this shampoo. So this is gonna be a learning process. For conditioner, I'm gonna be using this eye groom charcoal and keratin conditioner. This is a wonderful combination to use with this. This is a very intense conditioner. However, it rinses clean from the coat, it leaves our coat in beautiful shape. I will link all the products, guys, in the description below so that if you wanna go get them for yourself, you certainly can. I never use the conditioner straight up, and this does not say anywhere on the label that it is dilutable, but I'm not using it straight up because for one thing, I don't like to waste product. I put a little bit of water in the bottom of my Hydra mixing bottle. These are wonderful. I will link them for you. I'm not measuring, guys. I never do. I simply eyeball this. As I'm applying it, if I feel it's not diluted properly, I'll go ahead and add a little bit more conditioner or water to the scenario. I find that these products, that's why I like to use the eye groom products, they do go a long way as far as dilution and pushing your product value, which, which gives you more for your money. Definitely creates like a foam. That's what I want. I'm gonna add a little bit more water to this scenario. You saw how much conditioner I added. Remember I only added about that much water and now we've increased it just by shaking it with the product to foaming up this much. So I'm gonna add a little bit more. And then I'm gonna shake that up and then we'll be ready to condition Gaby. We'll be starting with our shampoo though. Always shake your products before you even add them into your dilution bottles. When you're getting ready to shampoo, shake up the products so you are definitely getting all these ingredients mixed together so your shampoo can perform the way it was meant to.
So let's shampoo this little Morky. We're gonna be using this Petals and Tails. I typically use a bathing system, the Prima bathing system. In order to show you how to get the most out of your shampoo, biggest bang for your buck, I'm gonna show you a different bathing method that I would use if I didn't have my bathing system, which tremendously helps me save time, water, and shampoo and it does a fantastic job. So we're gonna be using a loofah. Since we're doing that, we need to completely wet his little coat all the way down to the skin. The water that we're putting into his coat right now is what is going to actually dilute this shampoo. This is a non-dilutable product, but I've tested it in many ways and it dilutes beautifully, producing great results. I've also frothed the shampoo and it does an amazing job frothed. I'll link that video for you guys so you can see it. That was interesting. I have come to really love these Petals and Tails products. And I'm thinking about switching to using this as my main shampoo, Petals and Tails. You can buy it by the gallon. I need to test it in my bathing system. I'm pretty sure because of the way it frothed that it will perform nicely in my bathing system. And if it does, I may switch to it as my primary shampoo. For the face, I like to use products specific for washing your dog's face. They are meant to be gentle around the eyes and not cause any irritation. We're gonna be using the Petology Puppy Faces. We like to let that sit on just a little bit so it can loosen up the debris. Apply the Puppy Faces by Petology. Definitely wash really good around their lips, guys. A lot of bacteria builds up in there from eating and saliva and sniffing around outside for a poop spot. So it's important to clean these faces. We're gonna let this sit on for a minute so it can do its job. And while that's happening, we're gonna grab our loofah, add a little water to our loofah. These are magic if you're gonna hand wash a dog. Add just about a teaspoon of shampoo, and that may be all we need to wash this dog. Get it lathered in that loofah, look at this. And we start washing our puppy with the loofah. Take your time when you're shampooing your dog. This is one of the most important parts of the groom because if we don't have a perfectly clean, perfectly prepared coat, our groom's gonna be disappointing. Our finished product is gonna be disappointing. We work so hard on our grooming. Why does it look so bad? Because we didn't take the time to properly bathe and condition our dog. I used about a teaspoon of product. I don't feel the need to add any more yet. Can you see why it's important to choose good products? And the Petals and Tails, I think is, I'll throw it up on the screen. I think it's about $28 for that little bottle. How many times could we wash him using a teaspoon of this? Probably about 60 times. 60 baths for $28. It's very important to washing your dog's paw pads. Take your time. I'm gonna add a little more water, not shampoo. Water is kind of what helps boost your product, especially when you're using a loofah. Good boy. Yeah, good boy. I didn't need to use any more than a teaspoon. I like to let all my shampoos sit on the skin and coat, no matter what I'm using for about four minutes, five minutes. But what I do is I just work my way around the dog as you've seen me do with him. That's my process. And that works very well for me and that's why I'm sharing it with you guys. Next step to do is to over rinse the shampoo out. Don't add the conditioner right onto the shampoo because you're adding conditioner onto dirty coat. Let the shampoo do what it was designed to do which is to remove old oils out of the coat so that the new oils can begin to provide better results to your dog's skin and coat because their natural oils are very important and have a great duty to do for your dog. Right buddy? So we over rinse the shampoo and then we will be conditioning. When the water runs clear off your dog, then you know you've rinsed enough. My baby's ready for condition. The eye groom charcoal and keratin conditioner. I have diluted it in a Hydra mixing bottle. Start 
on the top of him and we just created a foam so we kind of frothed this product this is a wonderful conditioner to use guys don't really care about the type of coat it will soften the coat a little so if you have a hard crisp wire coat you may not want to choose the keratin but if that coat is dry and the skin is dry this is a wonderful one to rejuvenate quickly um, it's a very very intense moisturizing conditioner and I like to let all my conditioners set on for about four or five minutes, just like the shampoo. Yes, it takes time to bathe the dog. Um, don't rush it. Don't rush the bathing process, guys. That's what I talk about all the time on my channel. I want to set you up for success. I want you to know why your dog looks amazing when he comes home from the groomer and how they got that done. I love the Hydra mixing bottles because as you can see, I can just simply point and squeeze and I'm not wasting a lot because of this tiny little applicator that it has and they're perfect. I have a lot of mixing bottles. These are my favorite. Believe it or not, get in the pads of your dog's feet with those conditioners because they can become oily. They do have sweat glands in the bottom of their feet and sebaceous glands and the conditioner will break that down, believe it or not because grease dissolves grease and conditioner is a more heavier emulsification type product, I guess, versus our shampoos. You definitely want a shampoo in the pads of the feet too. First, good boy. I bet you can't wait to see what this coat's gonna look like when it's all dry and clean. I have no problem mixing products and saying I use a Petals and Tails shampoo and I use an eye cream conditioner. There is nothing wrong with that. You find your favorites and that's what you use. They're all good products. You don't have to just use the keratin shampoo by eye cream if you use the eye cream conditioner. You can mix and match. I've done it for years to find my favorites and, and my favorite combinations when it comes to shampoos and conditioners. I have many, you guys know. This isn't your first time on my channel, I assume. <laughs> yes, I have my favorites and I share them with you. When the water runs clear, guys, He's all rinsed when the water runs clear off of your dog and you don't see any soapy product or any milky conditioner coming out of the coat. That's how you tell if your dog is over rinsed. I use absorber towels to dry the dogs before I blow dry the dogs. The reason I like to use absorber towels is because they absorb so much water out of the coat that it really shortens down the drying process for the dogs. The drying process is typically their, their least favorite part of the groom because of the noise. And dogs have very keen sense of hearing. So anything that we can do to shorten down the drying process for them is doing them a favor, okay? And that's what grooming's all about, is doing what's best for you, yes. Roll it up. Let him shake, that's a good thing too. Wring it out. And continue to dry your dog. They're wonderful. They're easy to clean. I am affiliated with this product as they reached out to me and I tried the product for about two weeks and I got rid of all my towels for drying and I solely use the absorber towels to dry my dogs. I will put towels underneath them when they're on the table just to add comfort to them, that's all. Uh, but these are wonderful. So I am affiliated with the absorber towel. If you click on the link below, you can get, I believe, a 10% discount if you go and enter the code that's linked in the description of this video. Um, on your first purchase of the absorber towel. So don't hesitate to trade in your towels for this. It benefits you, it benefits your dogs. And I did do a very extensive demo on the absorber towel, so I'll link that in the card above. And I will also link it in the description for you to go watch if you wanna learn more about the absorber towels. During the bathing process, sometimes it, it is possible that a little water may enter the ears 
Typically not, but I use these little beauty pads and my favorite ear cleaner is the Bark to Basics. It contains witch hazel and not alcohol. I saturate that pad so a little bit of the product goes down in and I only want to wipe what I can see externally. And he has beautiful ears. So I'll use the other side of the pad for the other ear. Good boy. If he had questionable ears, redness, a lot of discharge, I would use one pad for each ear. Because we are taking our time to dry him properly and gently brushing him as he's drying, perfectly preparing this coat for trimming, I can get a comb all the way through from the skin out. And because I can, because I've been fluffing and brushing, now I will have no issues with my clipper when I go to clip this coat. It will go through it like butter. And that is the secret. So take your time with the bathing process. Take your time with the drying process. Both the bathing and drying process can make or break your groom. You wanna keep moving around your dog when you're drying. You don't wanna just keep constantly brushing in one area. You're gonna cause brush burn. His skin is soft because he was just in the tub. So we'll dry and fluff, move on to the next area, dry and fluff move on to the next area until we can completely get a comb through this dog. And when we can, then we're ready to trim the dog. Gaby's ready for trimming. The first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna set our outline of this trim with our clipper. This is gonna be the clipper work and then everything else is gonna be scissor finishing work. Over a 10 blade, I'm using a Wall KM10. I'm gonna use a half inch wall stainless steel guard comb made for detachable blades. And I'm using a 10 blade underneath. I hook that on. We're gonna start right behind his shoulders, about right here. And I'm just gonna flatten out his top line, coming straight off the back. This is a pet trim, so I'm not gonna be worried about too much angulation, but I do wanna show it bringing my clipper down straight off of the knee here. Straight, I'm not coming into the coat. I'm just coming straight down and only grazing what I want to take off. Same thing here, down the shoulder, straight down to the floor. You want your dog looking forward. Good boy, Gaby. Straight down to the floor. You can come in here behind the shoulder and in front of the shoulder, but we're gonna wanna scissor that. So we're gonna leave most of that. Good boy, buddy. We're not taking a ton off of him today, but we are taking just enough. And we're grazing here at the tuck up, kinda come up in front of his penis here and set his underline. I'm leaving a little more hair here to create a straighter underline. So, what determines that? Well, for me, I'm gonna say right here at the knee, where the knee bends, if you come up at a straight angle, let's call that the center of the dog. This we're going to leave fuller so that he doesn't look as long. If we took this off, he would look really long. So it's all about doing a little bit of um, creative grooming. 
and that's how we get the looks that we are trying to achieve is by knowing what to leave and what to take off. So still behind the shoulder blade, leveling that all off at the top, coming down into the chest here, leaving all this. We're gonna work with that as our leg assembly, but we can come straight down the shoulder and skin, kind of creating our pillared leg. Same with here, coming straight down off the hip and we're creating that pillar. We're starting to set that. Good boy. Here in the front of our dog, we're gonna take that same guard comb and we're just gonna come right under the jaw. You can feel his jawline. And we're gonna move right down, tip his little nose up, come straight down and in a little bit into that chest, the belly, but not into the leg hair. We're going to pretty much scissor that leg hair to get this look, guys. And this is a look that you play around with, you practice. We're coming straight down the neck and right down off of the, the shoulder into the leg, but not in, grazing. Good boy, good boy, honey. We're still leaving some of this. We're gonna deal with that in a minute. And we're on the other side. Good boy. We're doing the same thing on the other side. Coming straight off that hip and dropping down at the knee. Dropping off. Not taking any more hair. Not coming into the dog. Dropping off. Set in that tuck up right there where the stifle bends. We're going to take that a little tight under there. And pull this little leggy up. Come on under here. Good job, big boy. He's actually a pretty small dog under this hair. <laughs> you could probably tell that from when we were bathing him. On the tail, I come down just about an inch just to clean it up and keep it nice and sanitary for him. Okay, buddy. So I put my arm under him. Always pay attention to what my other hand is doing. Coming sideways across that like that. You can tidy up right here on the inside of the leg a bit. We're just setting the outline. I'm gonna show you some really cool tricks with a blending shear, a chunker shear here in a second, guys. Good boy. Come up under the belly where we set that tuck up. Come straight up to the chest. Just to get that nice and tight underneath. It's all right, buddy. Good. Now I switched over to an e-comb, a one inch. I'm going to tilt Gaby's head down so that his neckline is straight. I'm just going to come all the way up in reverse direction. This is safe because we're leaving a lot of length, guys. We're not affecting the hair follicle by leaving a one inch trim. It's okay to go in reverse direction with your guard combs as long as they're not too short. Okay, and we just set his neck. That's what we just did. We are gonna scissor it together, but we just set that neck so that it gets us where we wanna be. And then we're gonna take that same e-comb and come straight over his visor, right above the ears, and we're barely taking anything, but that's fine. It's even, it's leaving, an, setting an even length for us that we will be able to scissor. Good boy. Now, I did all my sanitary work, which is the pads and the privates, and I, I trimmed his earlobe a little bit just to vent it. The only thing left to do with my 10 blade is to just, I like to just take the corner of this out. That's it. The rest we're going to do with scissor work. I will link a video complete about trimming the pads, the sanitary, um, because I, I didn't feel like putting that in the video. It just, I, it's in so many of my videos, I didn't feel like putting it in. So 
We are just gonna gently hold his eye back and just using the corner of our 10 blade just to clean out the corner of his eye where it gets build up, that's all. We're just sort of cleaning that up a little tighter than we would with our scissor work. So now we're ready for scissor work. I'm going to be using three shears today to do my scissor work. We're gonna start with my Jody Murphy outliner and I'm just gonna outline and take out some of this around around his eye. If you're not safe with this guys, you can do it all with that 10 blade. If that if that doesn't, you know, you're not comfortable. Good job. And we're just this is just going to help to make those little eyes pop when we look at our baby. Good boy. We're just right there at the stop, which is between the eyes and right in front of the eyes where we did our 10 blade work. Now, I'm gonna set the outline of his head. We comb everything forward. I'm gonna use my eight inch curved shears made by Kenchi. These are the Sapphire. They're wonderful. And just coming in straight. Don't tilt your scissors back straight. And we're just setting his visor. Now I'm going to, now he has a bit of a drop coat, you know, it's not, he technically doesn't have a scissor coat. So I'm just gonna go over the top, above the ears, in almost a dome shape. And I'm just setting the length, scissoring what we have already set with our guard comb when we use that number one inch guard comb. Tilting his head straight towards me, I'm going to come right down into the neck and into the shoulder to blend all that together. Holding the ear out of the way gently, I can see what I have to tidy up here. You're a wonderful guy, Mr. Gaby. Same thing here. Notice I'm not moving my wrist when I scissor. I'm moving my arm and my body around the dog. Coming up here at his little dip area, we're just gonna blend all this together. And now I can see too where there's areas that my guard comb missed, which is typical. And we'll just tidy all that up. <laughs> Setting the outline. Under here, we've already kind of set that with our guard comb. I am just going to kind of angle this little beard around so he looks like he's a bit happier. Because <laughs> he is happy. All right, so we're setting the outline. We're going to come on around here and up and laying our scissor work right back into the ear, blending that together. We're just setting the outline. Good boy. And because he has a drop coat, it actually is a little easier to scissor at times because when it lays, it's, it's gonna kind of blend together. Good job, we're following that jaw line and then leaving hair to fill in where we need to. All right, it looks looks even. That's what we're after.
Let's comb everything up and towards the front. Take a look here. We're setting the outline. We're going to come in with chunker shears and soften everything up. Good, honey. You want to kind of comb everything up and out and the way it's going to naturally lay. I am going to trim right here very carefully. Okay, you don't have to do that, guys. <laughs> I do. And now I'm using these Kenji Love 17 tooth chunker blending shears. Just taking the tips of anything off that might have left a little harsh look from my scissor work. This is the easiest way to soften your whole look, is these blending shears. They're $99. On this coat, they really, really just set you up for complete perfection when it comes to scissor work. You could do all of the work with your blending shears instead of using a straight or a curved. I just like to set the outline with a straight or a curve. It's just a little bit more finalized and aggressive. Tipping that little nose up. I'm gonna blend all that together. Good job, baby. We're gonna be shortening these ears in a second. And you want a round shape. That's what we're looking for. I'm gonna take this in. It sticks out a bit over his beard and it makes him look less happy. So I'm bringing that in a little bit. It's okay, baby. Good job. Good boy, Gaby. Good boy. Okay. We don't want to take it too tight. We want him to look a little bouncy. I'm going to roll his ear up over my finger and just kind of Tidy this up here. Anything that pops up, I'm going to tidy it up. Good. I'm rolling my shears back as I'm moving up towards the top knot. Blending all that in. I have a firm grip on his nose, so that I can predict his movements. If he was going to do anything, I'd be able to predict that because we want to keep them safe. Scissors are sharp, guys. You can just see the magic that these blending shears produce. I'm going to blend it down into the chest so that's all looking good. And then we can continue to use those blending shears to smooth anything down. <laughs> Good job, baby. Because we already set our shape with our clipper work, remember? Now we're going to come on down the side of the dog. See how I'm getting a comb through him? It's very important. So I'm looking down him. I want to see straight. I don't want to see curvy. I want my silhouette to be straight. Coming on down the front of the leg. Right under where we set that tuck up. I'm going to round in. Look at what my shears are doing. Rounding up. Rounding that way just to soften all that up. It's so easy. These blending shears are just, I just feel like they're, they're necessary tools for us groomers or home groomers. I'm going to gently pick this front leg up, but not too high. And I'm going to thin out some of that armpit hair 
so that it doesn't mat up on him and it just kind of tightens up the the leg for us a little too back to shear I will bounce around between my shears often guys just pay attention to what my other hand is doing too that's how I get compliancy and get my dog to stand where I need him to stand now we're going to move around to the tail and tidy this up guys so what we're going to do it's okay fluff everything up a bit I want to come straight down on that hip into his leg we're going to tidy up a bit hold the tail out of the way we're going to tidy up with these chunkers right under the tail his anus is here I've already trimmed that with our sanitary trimming work. I'm going to hold the tail off to the side and tidy up. Remember I came in there with my guard comb a little to keep this nice and tidy. I'm going to do the same thing over here. Just that inch that I that I trimmed away. You can also use a straight or a curved shear in here. It's just fine. Not everybody's comfortable. You could do more clipper work in this area if that's what you're more comfortable with. You should always be confident about what you're doing to keep you from making a mistake. If you're not confident, then find a different way to do that. Over here, same thing. Coming up from that knee. Sets our angle in towards the elbow, which is how long we want our undercarriage to be, to about the elbow. Then we're going to round in, give him a little bit of shape. He's such a good boy. Round in. Good boy, sweet pea. Be very careful with your shears anywhere near the skin or the penis or those areas that you want to be extremely careful of. You want to always be extremely careful of every area. Should I say it that way? Good job. Thinning out that armpit. See it's starting to take a nice shape, guys. Beautiful job. Now I'm going to pull up this hair a bit with my comb, pull everything out. I want a pillared leg, so I'm going to be looking at it from the side, come straight down from the chest, come straight down to where we're going to set our little toesies. can blend this in a bit, straight down the back. You can also use a straight shear. I love to use these chunkers. Straight down, we're creating a pillared leg. So we want to box in all four corners, the front, the back, the sides, and then we round each corner all the way to the floor. See, come straight down. We're going to trim that foot in a second. I like to do the leg and do the foot last because that's easy to tie it together. And I like that. Now, we can bevel in his foot a little bit. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to find the front of his toes. And that's going to be the first part of my foot. Still using the blenders. Good. You're so much fun to trim, little guy. Then I'm going to make a little notch all the way around in a horseshoe shape. But see, I'm... I'm coming up a little bit. I'm not down against the floor yet. I'm going to switch over to my curves and show you what I'm going to do in a second. I'm just setting a, I'm kind of beveling. I want this to look a little beveled. And now you can take your curved and bring that up and into that line you just set. 
switch your curve to the other side, come up and into that. You can switch right back over to your blender if that's more comfortable. I love the blenders for this. It's just like a magic eraser. It's so cool. And now we've only set the front of the foot, remember guys? Now we're going to set the back of that little foot. Let's turn you this way, big boy. Okay. Calming everything down. Have him standing straight. Down to the floor. We really don't have to take much at all. Use the fine end of your comb. Curved shears would be nice right here. Everything down. I still haven't picked this foot up yet. I will in a second, but I want you to do most of your work with the foot down. That's the safest thing and it's the most accurate thing for you when you're shaping this foot. Now I'm going to slightly pick up the foot, comb everything down. And anything straight over the pads is all I'm tidying up. So anything hanging past the pad of the foot, that's the only thing I'm tidying up. Nice job, buddy. Comb it down again. Take another look. We can bring this up and round it in again a little bit to give that bottom of the foot some better shape. Pick that foot up, comb everything over. You see where it's, it's hanging and, and just tidy it up. Less is more, guys. Same thing. Hold the foot straight. He has definitely an easty westy leg, means they turn in a bit, so we're actually camouflaging that with our grooming. It's okay, bud. Same thing for the back leg, guys. We're going to scissor the leg first, get his little chin looking up so we get an accurate position so the hair falls the way it should. Come straight down, comb everything kind of up and out, comb straight, scissor down, hi baby. He has such a pretty coat to work with. Same thing on the inside of the legs. Tidy up a little better in there too. Good job, buddy. We want to see straight legs. Now we're ready for the back foot. So same thing, combing everything down, going right in front of the toes straight across, only at the bottom of the table, straight back the side, straight back the other side, and now we're going to set like a little bevel that we want to work up to. We're going to round up, kind of make a little beveled look. Good boy, Gaby. You can pick that foot up. 
just what's hanging over the pad. Be very careful. Don't rush when you're trimming around pads. Always trim this back pad with your blade sideways. Good job, baby. Good, good boy. Let him put his foot down. Using our curves again. And we're just tidying everything up, making it nice and round. See the difference between each foot? Last thing we're going to do is shorten his ears. So we're going to comb everything down and with him looking straight ahead, I'm going to take, first you want to find your ear leather of your dog guys and you can do that simply by running your thumb down. I can feel his ear leather is right here. All this is hair. It's important to know that. And we're going to shorten his ears up close to the length of his muzzle. So. We're going to set that. We're going to come in with our curves. And set that length. And you got to kind of look at it from all angles. I have a good video on ears, feet, and tail. I'll link it for you guys in the description and in the card. I want to come straight across and make a notch. So I know they're going to be even. Have him looking straight. And we're just going around with our curved shear. Good job, honey. We'll take a look at it from all angles. That looks good. Look at him straight on. Oh my gosh, he's a cutie, isn't he? at him straight on and we can see
Amy Lee. I am a certified professional pet groomer since 2003. I am also a content creator on YouTube. I have a YouTube channel called Go Groomer, and on that channel, I bring a new voice to the pet grooming industry, one that includes pet owners as a valuable consumer. By sharing my secrets of the pet grooming industry on my YouTube channel, it allows me to give pet owners the opportunity to provide quality care for their beloved pets at home, increasing value to their pets' lives, as well as increasing the bond they share with their pet. It's pretty awesome.